Yo, yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I am going to show you all the plugins I use on every mix. I got like a few DMs on Instagram about all the stuff that I use uh, because I do post a lot on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you know, go ahead and drop a follow. The link is in the description below. So all these plugins I will link below along with all the equipment that I use. You can use my Amazon links to also get all the gear that I'm using or that I have used or that I trust. If you're new here, please uh, subscribe, share my videos, give my uh, video a like. It would really help my channel a lot. If you're returning and you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Just go ahead and subscribe. So the first one, I'm gonna just, the way I'm gonna do it, I'm just gonna start from top to bottom because that's personally how I like to mix. I like to start with the bass, drums, percussion, synth, piano, guitar, and et cetera, all the way down. We'll go all the way down basically. This is an unreleased song, so I'm not gonna play the full song, but I'll play the individual elements a little bit just so we can hear what the plugins are doing. I'll start with the individual tracks. So on the first bass, I just named it B1, B2 because there's three different types of basses that are being used in the song. Um, I'm just using the Plugin Alliance SSL 4000 E channel and I'm pretty much using this all across the board slightly different settings it looks like and then as you can see uh, something that I like to do with the plugin Alliance channel strips specifically I like to take advantage of the THD so I crank the THD all the way you know just to drive the plugins a little bit more just to get a little bit more you know analog emulation basically so as far as this um, bass crush which is basically just a parallel bus I'm using the Kirchhoff EQ, rolling off a little bit of low end. Um, I only want to affect the top end, basically. Um, and then I'm using the PSP Saturator. If you aren't familiar with the PSP, I know the PSP stuff is popular, but it's still very niche, I think. I still I still think a lot of people don't know about them. You know, they their classic is probably the Vintage Warmer, which I do use a lot. If you're not familiar with the PSP stuff, you should go check them out. I also have a discount code exclusive for YouTube that is in the description below. Yeah, I like using this a lot. This kind of reminds me of if you are coming, if you come from like the FL Studio world, maybe even other dolls too, but I know it was very popular in the FL Studio community was the Camel Crush uh, distortion saturation plugin. Um, but this very much like reminds me of it just in a much more, I don't know, higher quality th way. You definitely have way more control with this plugin, but it reminds me of that plugin. So if you're familiar with that, this is like, an HD version of it, I guess you could say. And then the next one is MicroShift, which uh, like I said, if you've seen my other videos, you know a lot of these are gonna look familiar. And then as far as the bass bus goes, I use Kirchhoff, first thing in my chain typically, 99% of the time it's the first thing in my chain. Second one, LA2A Gray, uh, another plugin that I mention a lot. This one, I don't know if I've mentioned too much, but if you're familiar with the UAD Culture Vulture, then this will look super familiar. This is just Arturio's version. And then the next one I use, um, Sound Toys Little Radiator. Same thing, just getting a little bit more juice, a little bit more analog. I think this thing sounds super analog. However they modeled it, I think they did a really good job basically. But I will solo the bass and then we can hear what's happening on every individual thing so let me bypass these and then let me bypass the bass crush and then we'll hear with and without the ssl channel basically Just a little bit of EQ, just a little bit of compression, basically. Um, but you know, it's uh, it's doing it's doing the SSL thing. I won't go through the other tracks because this is the same plugin, basically. I'm gonna play the same section, and I'm gonna bring in all these plugins on my bass bus one at a time. So yeah, I mean, you can definitely hear the LA-2A definitely, you know, grabs the signal and really tightens it up a little bit. But as soon as I throw in the culture vulture, like that low end really comes out, which is what I'm trying to achieve is just add some low end that either doesn't exist or just enhance what's there by using saturation and a little bit of distortion. Obviously, you can hear the little radiator kicking in um, with its distortion and it just really cuts through basically.
the bass crush you can definitely hear like it's just widening a little bit um i go in more depth i have a video specifically on me mixing um bass and this exact chain that i use and the setup for it and the idea behind it and my influence so um, i'll link that video somewhere on the screen or below and then you can check that out and i go way more in depth on the exact settings for all these plugins and why i specifically chose them you can hear that it's definitely just adding a little bit more space with the bass um definitely making it a tad bit wider so let's move to drums now pretty similar setup with the drums um you get a bus i have a parallel drum bus ready to go if i need it and then all the individual tracks feed into this bus um as far as the individual tracks so this drum loop just using same thing ssl 4000 an individual kick sample same thing, starting off with the 4000E. A little lo-fi on the kick just to get it to punch through a little bit. Yeah, you can hear that low end really come in. If you're on headphones or good speakers, you'll definitely hear it. Let me do it without it, just because you can hear a big difference. So yeah, it's sounding, it sounds you know good, but it's a little clicky too. and I'll bring it in right now. So you can really hear it kind of turns almost like in my, the way I'm thinking about it, just I kind of turn it into more of like a hip hop sound, basically more like trap um, kick basically is what I'm going for. Cause I really want that low end to kick through on the song. And with the Pultec, I'm boosting 3K. 10 dB basically uh, it looks like I guess that's what I felt like it needed just to cut through a little bit and then let's bring in this kick which is kind of like the transition kick you know just like a little reverb throw on the kicks basically but same thing just using the SSL 4000 and then the snare same thing, SSL 4000. And like I said, if you've noticed, cranking that THD on all of the uh, SSL 4000s by Plugin Alliance. And then a little bit of D-verb. You know, just to add a little bit more room, add a little bit more space, it kind of spreads the snare out. I just wanted to extend the snare. And then let's do the percussion. Percussion is pretty straightforward. Um, same setup, every individual track seems like I just used the, uh, channel strip by Avid just to cut low end out of it. And then on the overall bus, I like to use the black box. This is like really subtle, but I feel like the black box is good, is good at adding like depth, I guess, especially when it comes to percussion, like trying to just make, you know, uh, basics, um, basic hi-hat samples or any stuff like this, like rhythmic stuff, kind of put it in a place or put it in a room. It, I feel like with the black box, it helps um, percussion sit better in a mix instead of just kind of being there, if that makes sense. And then next is synths. Um, not a whole lot going on. Didn't do a whole lot of processing, kind of just let them uh, do their own thing. So with this, let's see what this is. Micro shift on one, which is probably the top one. Yeah. So usually when I have like a layered synth where they're playing the same thing, um, if there is a top layer, like this case, it's a little bit higher, playing at a higher key or higher uh, note, then I like to spread that one and then use the low one as the body. It looks like I'm probably doing a little bit of filtering. Yep, just a little bit of filtering with the Avid EQ. And then this last one looks like it's probably a micro shift again. Or, yeah, yeah it is. So yeah, I mean, pretty straightforward. Uh, not a whole lot going on with the synths. And then on the overall bus, just another uh, little radiator. kind of 
another plugin that can add depth. So yeah, really pushing that mid-range. Next is pianos. This is usually my go-to for pianos. Uh, the Lindell 80 series by uh, Plugin Alliance, just like their version of 80 series Neve. Um, for some reason, I like to use this on piano, especially when it comes to uh, utilizing their preamp section because you can use this Unity uh, button to match the output because you know when you distort something it essentially gets quieter because you're smashing the shit out of it but if you hit the unity button it'll match that output so you um, retain your level basically but you still get that distortion so i like to use this on piano a lot especially when it comes to this it kind of just for some reason i just think this neve or neves in general sound really good on piano um, and then just a little bit of filtering and it looks like i'm doing no eq and pretty heavy compression for this plugin at least i would say Just really like taming those initial transients on the on the keys as soon as they hit. So yeah, just taming a little bit with that compressor, but it sounds really good when you can get it to work. And then let's see what we got going on for guitars. So individually, I like I know I like to use API stuff on guitars which looks like I'm utilizing the uh, UAD API channel strip um, on all of them. And then on the main guitar loop, I'm using a little bit of this PSP spring box. Don't forget to use my code below. If you're gonna buy, you might as well get 10% off while you can. So here's just with the API first. So yeah, obviously you can hear that compressor kicking in, a little bit of the, a um, little bit of the line amp kicking in, compressor's kicking in, and definitely the EQ is kicking in for sure. Getting a little bit of gain from that. But it just sounds really clean in my opinion. And then utilizing that filter too. I, I like the API filters, they sound really cool. Um, and then the next thing, I guess I felt like it needed a little bit more uh, spring reverb. And I know it's super subtle, so I'm going to compare it to like something that's a little bit more wet, just so you can hear the uh, spring reverb stuff, because I think this spring reverb sounds really good. So here's what I had. It's subtle, but you know, it's just adding a little bit of dimension. Because if you can hear on the wet signal, it, you know, there's a lot of space. I mean, they did a really good job. Definitely sounds like a real spring reverb. And then this last plugin is a little bit of the Hitsville reverb, just to put it in a space, I'm sure. So here's without it. So you can definitely hear it's, it warms it up a lot. I mean, let's hear that again. Yeah, it yeah, it just like warms it up a lot. It's adding a warm tone for to it for sure. Like that top end is being rolled off, so I don't know what's happening as far as like the input into this plugin, but there's definitely some uh, top end rolling off, and that could just be you know the signal basically being sent to these speakers and the microphones and all that stuff, and that's just UAD doing a really good job at capturing and emulating this space with the equipment in it. So you can hear the the tail. I'll be quiet for a second. So yeah, you can hear that spring combined with this just sounds really good. You can hear like the tail of the spring being enhanced by uh, the Hitsville. So yeah, 
yeah, I don't know. These two are a good combo. And then as far as these individual elements go, it looks like obviously I'm still utilizing the API and then I'm using a little bit of the Avid stereo width on this. So yeah, just, you know, just pushing it out to the sides a little bit more. And then this like bridge kind of guitar. Um, same thing, API. And then I'm using the Friedman amp by plugging a line. Well, they're uh, licensing it. Uh, overall mix bus or overall guitar bus. Um, just using another API just to finish it off. And then sound effects. Uh, you know, not a whole lot of processing with with the sound effects and stuff. Um, Looks like I'm doing nothing to them literally, but this is probably like a riser or something. Yeah. So with this kind of stuff, um, just black box, kind of treating it the same as the percussion. Um, but it looks like I'm not really doing anything with this either. It's probably just there in my template, just ready to go if I felt like I needed it. So not really doing anything, but it's there. And then as far as my throws go, and I saw this from Josh Goodwin, so I've been using it ever since. I thought it was super smart for like an eighth delay throw, quarter delay throw, and a half throw in a reverb, um, just using the Valhalla stuff. No specific reason on why I use these settings. I When I do my throws, I just try to find one that works. So these settings and types of delays aren't like the ones that are in my template. It probably just starts off as a tape delay as default, and then I just go through and manually tweak them. Uh, per song and then as far as my uh, reverb throws go I like to use the vintage filter for it. I think it sounds really cool Another one that I got from Josh good when I saw him use on one of his videos with like Justin Bieber I think and then Valhalla delay and then that goes into a little plate and then finishing it off with the tube tech Yeah vocals like I say if you're a returning subscriber, you probably already know my vocal chain I don't think it's too much different than from what I've showed so far this year because like I said I've switched it up this year just kind of simplified my vocal chain. Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna play it. I don't wanna give away the song. The first one is Kirchhoff Eve Q. Uh, second one is the Avid Deesser. And then the last one to finish it off is just the Fairchild uh, 660, basically. All this routing goes into my vocal bus and little radiator. Next one is another PSP plugin. It's the PSP Twin Limiter. I really like this. I think it has a certain tone to it, which is what I like. And it's just super easy to use. And to be honest, I really just needed a good limiter um, for vocals. And because this has a tone to it that I like, um, that's why I chose this one. And then to finish it off, um, it's just a little bit of the Spectre EQ from Wave Factory. And then same thing goes with the um, hook. So I'm not going to go through that. So same plugins, basically. Um, as far as doubles go, very simple. Just using the SSL 4000E again, utilizing the compressor, EQ, and filters. Same thing, THD is cranked all the way. And then just an Avid de -esser. And that's all across the board for my doubles. And then as far as the bus goes, another Kirchhoff EQ. I like to use the SSL bus compressor. Next thing is the Valhalla delay. This is adding a little bit of spread. As you can see, I've made my own preset. Mix is super low using the quad mode basically, or style, I guess. And yeah, it's just adding a little bit of stereo. Same thing as the doubles, SSL 4000E by Plugin Alliance and another um, Avid de -esser. Using the PSP Vintage Warmer, I really like this. Um, like I said, if it's something that you want to pick up or it's something that you've always wanted to pick up, use my uh, discount below, get 10% off, might as well. Um, and then Kirchhoff Eve Q again, and then Shadow Hills to finish it off. All my buses feed into these final like banks, I like to call them. They're just another set of buses where I can individually process each element of the song. And it also allows me to make quick stems if I need them. So on my all bass bus, I'm using, basically it's the 33609, Neve, but I'm using Arturia's version. Um, I really like the way this sounds too. And on my drum bus, I either switch between the 1073 by Arturia or this, because basically what I want to utilize is the saturation um, that they bring. And specifically this has this like valve, but which I have a preset literally called valve, yeah, valve only. I'm not utilizing any of the compressor 
on this at all. I'm just utilizing this, which basically is just some sort of like line amp, I believe I read in the manual or something. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm just utilizing this. Um, and then on synths, I like to use this uh, plugin, the SPL Iron from Plugin Alliance. And the reason I like to use this, I'm not using it for the compressor, I'm just using it for the tone. And then I'm also using the stereo width because I think Plugin Alliance and they also they also are known for just having a really solid way of adding a stereo width. Typically, I'm not doing anything on percussion. And then the piano, kind of similar thing that I want to do with the Shadow Hills, except I just want it to be a little bit more clean, and I'm just using it for a little bit of width. And then guitars, same thing, um, just looking for a little bit more width, basically, and I'm using the SPL iron again. And then as far as the uh, vocals go, basically, it's just the Avid Ensemble and Flanger. They're the first two plugins in the all my all vocal chain. And then I finish it off with the Shadow Hills. Um, just like the tone of it, and I'm using it for the compressor just a little bit more. And I also utilize the stereo width on it. My all effects bus, which is basically all my reverbs send or all my reverbs, all my delays and vocal stuff. Um, they all get ran through this black box basically. Before I move on to the master bus, you can see there's a plugin that I skipped which I got this from Mark Daniel Nelson. If I had a console, what would I want it to sound like? UAD's API has a certain tone to it and actually has some depth to it. I'm just kind of using the line amp a little bit. You can see I have it cranked a little bit and I'm compensating with the output fader. I mean, that's pretty much it. Just just kind of doing like some sort of in the box, like fake summing. As far as the master bus goes, Kirchhoff EQ. Uh, my next one is API 2500. Sometimes this will switch with the SSL bus compressor. Uh, it just depends on the type of song. Usually I use the SSL if I'm doing like live stuff. Um, I like to use that a lot. But for anything else, I really like the API 2500. And then after that, I don't use this a lot. But for this song, I felt like it needed it. This is like something new, but also something I don't use all the time. But if I do use an EQ, because I don't try to EQ a whole lot as far as like boosting goes on my master bus. But I just really felt like this needed it. And this... EQ itself, I mean, if you know the real one costs like 10 grand basically, I think, or a little bit more. I think this EQ sounds really good. It sounds like 10 grand in my opinion, the high end on it. I mean, you can see that I'm just boosting everything on it just a little bit, um, especially the, the top end sounds really, really good. It just a really, really clean EQ. But another one by Plugin Alliance goes on sale all the time. So um, if it's something that you've been looking at, I would definitely get it. My next plugin is just a clipper. I like to use the standard clip. That's what I'm using now and have been using for like the last year. And then after that is my Ozone. I'm still in the elements. I think this is like version nine. Yeah, version nine. I just like the limiter on it. I like the imager and the equalizer specifically on this element one. I don't know how different it is from like the upgraded version, but I'm kind of fine with this and it does what I need it to do. And then uh, my final limiter is usually just the newfangled audio limiter. This is usually what I use for mastering or when I need to send or make songs loud uh, to be sent out to the artist. Then my next one is the SSL meter. I used to have the SSL UF1, but I recently got rid of it uh, like a month ago because I'm just gonna go ahead and get an Avid S1. But I still like to use this uh, for the metering. I think the metering on it's really good. And then for this, I'm just using the loudness meter and that's pretty much it. So yeah, that's my master bus. So for my doubler, um, I'm using the micro shift. Everybody uses it. I like to use it on a send. Uh, Dimension D using UA's licensed version, but it basically is a Dimension D. Um, using the Mog EQ, the K compressor, which I really like. Uh, you know, Mog, if you're watching this, I would love to try a, a test out a real one. Um, so yeah. Um, and then just another, uh, Avid EQ for some filtering. I'm using the, um, 480L by, uh, Relab, right? Yeah, Relab. I'm using the UAD Lexicon 224. For my EMT, I believe I'm using the Arteria one. I usually use the UAD one, um, but this one has a little bit more features and I also don't have any... UAD hardware anymore, so I can't even use the uh, EMT 140. But this one, I think, sounds equally as good. Um, it just has a little bit more features, which is nice. And then the Brocasti, everybody knows, everybody's using it right now. I'm using the Seventh Heaven by Liquid Sonics. And then the AMS, I usually use the UAD actual AMS, but like I said, I don't have any UAD hardware, so unfortunately, 
I had to just kind of recreate my own. My mono delay is just a Galaxy Tape Echo by UAD. My slap is Valhalla. And I'm uh, specifically using the Quartz. I thought this one sounded really cool for a slap delay. And Brainworks I'm using for my quarter note delay because I like the control over it. This is a really, really powerful delay. And then same thing, Brainworks uh, BX Delay 2500. Those are pretty much uh, all the plugins that I use on a mix. I would say like 95% of the time. If you made it this far, uh, please use any of the links in my description below to use or to grab any of the plugins that I use that I just showed you or um, any of the gear that I have used or I do use now. You can use all those links below and then please subscribe. Please keep watching. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. We're almost there. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.